Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, William Smithers, Sharon Acker, Lynn Marta, special guest star, Dean Stockwell. Tonight's episode, the programming of Charlie Blake. Sound like a robbery. Okay, we're on our way. Oh, Sergeant, Sergeant, oh, one minute. What was that address again? Yeah, God, thank you very much. A man rapes a woman and rips off her gold locket. I don't know what's Let's not talk on. about it. Let's just go and find out. <laughs> Hollander. I'm Lieutenant Stone, and this is Inspector Keller. I wonder if it would be all right if we uh, took a look in that room over there. What? What is... And wouldn't he even let me cover her up? And then... Everybody keeps coming in and looking around. I'm sorry, dear. You must have been very close to her, huh? Maybe you can tell us some of the fellows she dated. Gave names to the sergeant. There weren't many. Did anyone ever try to make a pass at her? She wasn't like that. Just never had any trouble. Just a phone call last week. What call? She wouldn't tell me what he said. Just that he was obscene. Filthy. I told her to call the police, but she was too embarrassed. I should have called the police. I should have done it myself. <laughs> I should have caught him. I should have caught him. Just don't blame yourself. And I'm seeing you call last week and tonight this. Yeah, but they're usually not violent. Well, maybe this one's an unusual type. What did you find? Those men Jimmy'd, Mike. It's got to be the way he got in. Jimmy'd, huh? 
Okay, check out the neighborhood, will you? Get a line on all the night crawlers you can find. Okay, Mike. So where do you want to start? I want to start with every sex offender within three miles of here. I swear, I haven't done anything like that for years. Believe me, that's over. Hey, come on, I'm a veterinarian now. I, I don't have to tell you anything. You, you don't have to go home today either. Hey, come on. Look, you said you went to see a movie at the Carlton, but that's been closed for over a month now. Yes, sir. I remember. It was at the Mission. I came in about halfway through the picture. You know, it was that big Navy picture. So you went down Oak to 19th and through the park. That's right. Well, that wouldn't have taken all night, Mr. Blake. Where else did you go? I don't remember. I went for a walk. It's good exercise. Can't you believe someone can get better? Sure. But I still have to know where you were last night. I've been seeing a doctor regularly, a psychiatrist, Dr. Norman Jessup. Ask him, he'll tell you. I will. Well, then why drag me away from my job with everyone watching? And why treat me like a criminal now? Because a 20-year-old girl was raped and murdered. She received the same kind of phone call you used to make. Any bites? One, maybe. Name's Shaflera. Two priors. Is that him at your desk? Mm-hmm. First he thinks he was watching television, then he says he went to a movie, only he can't remember the theater. Just can't get his act together. Real cattle call, huh? So invent another system. Until you do, you stay with him. Check him out. Let me read this first. Listen, Charlie, every time you open your mouth, it's trouble. Why don't you just tell me the truth? Okay, I was with a girl. And why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Because she doesn't know about my record, and I don't want to lose her. All right, what's her name? Jill Allerman. How long were you with her last night? I don't know, uh, between six and eight, something like that. Then what? Then I went for a walk, like I told you. Which takes us right back to where we started. All right, you can go. We'll be in touch. Do you have to talk to her? Yes, but I'll have to tell her everything. That depends upon you. Thanks a lot. You see a possible? I don't know. Maybe they all are. You know, there's got to be a better system. Never mind the better system. Is he a possible? Yes. Uh, Dr. Jessup, please. Charlie Blake calling. <clears throat> no, 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 no. I have, to, I have to talk to him now. Uh, please tell him this. It's urgent. Uh, Dr. Jessup? I do have another call on hold, uh, Charlie. What is it? Well, I'm sorry, but I have a full schedule today. Somebody's got to listen to me, doctor. Listen. Uh, I just lost my job. The police are harassing me, and uh, my probation officer is out of town. And I don't think I can handle it. Okay, take something to calm down, Charlie, and I'll meet you here in one hour. Okay? Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, darling. No, 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 no. It's just a regular crisis. I'm going to be a little late, though. I'll be not before 8 o'clock. I know it's special, so keep it warm. Yes, you too. Okay. I promise. Tell me that was your brother. Of course it might have been one of those emotionally disturbed truck drivers who like to be called darling. We all have our own therapy. You want to discuss yours? Oh, stop it, Eleanor. No, oh, you stop it! <sighs> Call her back, Norman. Tell her the good doctor is busy. I'd appreciate it if you would leave, uh, Eleanor, because I have another patient coming.
call her Norman. I want to hear you. This is Dr. Jessup. I'm going to have to cancel our engagement for this evening. I'm sorry. That's right, baby honey. He can't cut it. And there won't be any more dinners! Shake. If I ever tell the medical profession about your female patients, you won't even have a license. You're drunk. You're drunk. And you're weak. And you're evil. I'll sober up. What will you do? And when the police questioned you, all the old guilty feelings came back? Yes. As if I'd made those calls. We're going to have to go back in time, Charlie. You're going to have to bring those guilt feelings out in the open. And then you will feel better. I want you to pretend to make a phone call. I want you to pretend to dial a woman's number. Talk to her just like you used to. Remember how you felt three years ago? The loneliness? Dial and tell her how you feel. Hello. It's me. What difference does it make? I know you. I've been watching you for a long time. And you're very beautiful. Your body. Mmm, your legs. I love you. Salomon? Yeah? yeah? I'm Inspector Keller. I'm with the police department. We got a few minutes. I'd like to ask you some questions. Sure. Thank you. Police. It always sounds so ominous, yeah. doesn't it? Well, I know I haven't done anything wrong, but have I? No, no, ma'am. I want to talk to you about a friend of yours, a Charles Blake. Charlie? Well, what about him? Well, I understand he spent the evening with you last night. That's right. I'm sorry, would you like to sit down? Yeah, thank you very much. Is uh, something wrong? Is he in some sort of trouble? He called me at the office, but I was uh, away from my well, desk. you haven't talked to him today? No. Well, may I ask you uh, how long you spent with him last night? Several hours. He had, we had dinner here, the three of us. Three? My daughter, Carrie. Oh. And about what time did he leave? Oh, it was around eight, I guess. You've uh, known each other a long time? Several months. Long enough to know about his police record, if that's what you mean. Well, you know about it, then. Is that what these questions are about? Right. Well, in certain homicides, we have to check people with records like Charlie's. Homicide? What are you talking about? Uh, right here. This uh, young lady who was murdered. There was a telephone call. Matter of fact, several of them. There's probably no connection, but we still got to check it out. Last night? That girl? That's right. Charlie couldn't. I mean, what's this got to do with passing bad checks? That's what he was arrested for. Wasn't he? Is that what he told you? 
What are you telling me? That he's made obscene telephone calls? Is that what his record was? aren't you? Yeah. Well, I just came from something that might fit in. An obscenity call. Lady named, uh, Jessup. Does that do anything for you? No, not a thing. I'd like to see a copy of that call, though. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What was her name? Jessup. Eleanor Jessup. Is her husband a shrink? That's right. His name's Norman. All right, thanks a lot, John. What? That's quite a coincidence. Charles Blakely's psychiatrist is Norman Jessup. Whose wife just happens to receive an obscene call after we talked to one of her husband's patients. Oh, come on. Now, you know me. I'm not big on coincidences. Coincidences, I know. Why would a patient of my husband's call me? Well, we don't know that for sure. We only know that he has a past record of, of uh, calls of this sort. You're aware of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm aware of it. His treatment was the condition of his probation. Would you like a brandy? No. No, thank you. Why didn't you mention that to the policeman earlier? Darling, there are thousands of people with Charlie Blake's problem running around the city. I'll have one. Any one of them could have made that call. Dr. Jessup, do you know we had Blake in our office just yesterday? Yes on the rape murder case. Norman! Now, please, don't be upset. He came by to see me. He'd been fired from his job. He was very disturbed, naturally. Well, we thought there might be a connection. I see none at all. Mrs. Jessup, would you recognize Blake's voice if you heard it again? I'm afraid not. These things are, uh, when they happen, they're shocking. I'm not much help. Could he have seen you somewhere? At one time, Norman held his evening therapy sessions here. I believe he was here once or twice. And you didn't think that was important enough to tell the other inspector? No, uh... <laughs> I'm trying to help Charlie Blake. The entire relationship between a psychiatrist and a patient is based on confidence. The confidence is violated, the therapy is no longer effective. I assure you, Norman's professional ethics outweigh any personal consideration. Yes, of course. Well, certainly thank you for your time. I'm sure that this was only a, um, oh, a coincidence. Nice meeting you. Goodbye. Thank you. I'll see you out. Say, you had a psychology minor, didn't you? Uh, 11 units, yeah, but... Good, I'm going to give you a chance to work on a postgraduate degree. On department time. I want you to check out Blake's probation officer, ex-employer, the, the works. Timio Daneos y Donas Ferentes. Hold it. Come again. Beware of Greeks bearing gifts. It's amazing what education will do to people. 
Jill. This place is too crowded. Thank you. I, I mean, this is no place to talk. Let's leave. I'd rather not. Why? Just rather not. Okay, Jill. I was sick, huh? But I'm not anymore. I couldn't make that kind of phone call now. I couldn't. Please, Jill, believe me. I want to. How can I prove it to you? Um, uh, say if, say if I'd had a broken arm and it healed, okay? I could show you the x-rays. But how can I show you what's in my head? Just give me some more time. Give us both some more time. Maybe later, maybe... Do you know the only person in this whole world that believes me is my doctor? And I have to pay him. Of course you recognize her, Charlie. Say her name. Joan Warren. She's responsible for everything that's happened to you. The police. Losing your job. Jill's loathing you. She's responsible, isn't she? Yes. Well, look at her. She's laughing at you. She says you're sick and you're dirty. And you stop her from saying those things. Stop her with your hands around her throat. Stop her. Stop her from calling you those names. See how soft her throat is? Stop her. That's right. Now. Now you've done it now. She's dead. You've killed Joan Warren. Say it, Charlie, and I can help you. Killed. Killed Joan Warren. That's right. Now you can lean back and relax. Just lean back. You feel good now because you've told the truth. And you feel even better when you've told the police, won't you, Charlie? Say it. Yes, I feel better. I want to help you, Charlie. You know that, don't you? Yes. All right. Now, look. Look at this clock. It says 5.30 now. I want you to go to sleep. And I want you to forget everything that's happened in this session. Do you understand? The alarm will ring at 7 o'clock. You will leave here and come to my house. You know how to get there, don't you? Yes. You will come in by the side door. You will go up the stairs. And at exactly 8 o'clock, you will wake up. And I will help you. Nothing here says Blake's regressed psychologically or otherwise. Even his probation officer says he's doing fine. So you think he's clean? <sighs> so far, all I know is he took a lonely walk the night that girl got murdered. Well, that's what that guy in there keeps telling us, too. He's changed his story so many times, you need a road map to follow him. Well, whoever it is. Let's just hope he doesn't strike again. Why can't I go with you? It's a sports dinner, Eleanor. It's for men. 
You and old Leonard certainly qualify as sports. <laughs> Am I so repulsive to you? No, Eleanor. Let's not fight tonight. You loved me once. Yes, I did. But you bought me, Eleanor. You bought this house, the clinic. You bought my soul. You put a price tag on everything. Even this. Priceless. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, look what you've done. Oh. No, it doesn't make any difference, Elmer. <laughs> side gate, you'll find the back door unlocked. Now walk upstairs. Turn right and go to the bedroom at the end of the hall. to get you up. Tell me. Strangulation, at least a couple hours ago up there. Possible attempted rape, used a tie, still around her neck. How did he break in? Jimmy, the side door there. Who found her? Uh, the husband and a uh, friend, an attorney named Leonard Paxton. Did you get a statement? Yeah, they were downtown having dinner. Got back about 11.30. Yes, I'm with Norma now. I'll see you in the office tomorrow morning at 8.30. Thank you. Mr. Paxton, Lieutenant Stone, homicide. How do you do? Ugly business. Yes, it is. I understand that you were with Dr. Jessup tonight. All evening, yes. I've told the inspector what little I know. Would you mind telling me? Well, I picked Norman up about 7.15. Eleanor was feeling poorly, so we went directly to the club for a drink. Then dinner. I remember the clock in the hall was striking the half hour when we came in, so it must have been 11.30. Norman went upstairs to tell her we were here. I... I heard him cry out. I ran up and saw her. Oh, feel better? Oh, I'm all right. Dr. Dr. Jessup. There is never a good time to ask these questions. Oh, I understand. Uh, I want to be helpful. I don't know what I can tell you. Uh, I didn't see anyone. I didn't hear anyone. But did you have any idea who could have broken in? I... 
I don't know how to answer that question. What do you mean? It involves a legal uh, question. The confidentiality of a relationship between a doctor and patient. You mean Charles Blake? Lieutenant, I don't mean to intrude. But I've told Norman I would represent him, and I've had no time yet to look into the legalities. But I'm sure that by tomorrow morning, he can give you a full deposition. If Blake is guilty of murder, I want him in jail tonight, and not tomorrow. Why do you think he did it? I don't know. I may be wrong. I... He was very disturbed today. I asked him if he had made that phone call to my wife. I almost accused him of it. I was that upset. I wanted to shake him and force him to tell me the truth. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But if I hadn't disturbed him more, my wife might still be alive. All right, Lieutenant, that's enough. Please. I'll be in contact with you in the morning. Anytime. Bye. Excuse me, Mr. Paxton. Did, uh, did Dr. Jessup invite you here tonight? No. It was my idea. Something on your mind? It's quite a coincidence to have a lawyer here right when you need one. There's good sets of prints all over the room. Jake, I want every inch of this room covered. Photos on my desk at 8 o'clock. Mike, here's the murder weapon. I had to cut it off. This night work is getting to me. Tell me. I'll send the boys up with the gurney when you're ready. Steve. I don't see the doctor wearing a cheap tie like this, do you? Listen, I called Blake's house. There was no answer. You know where to look for him? Maybe, yeah. So, follow through. All right. Be careful. Yeah. He's got to be sick. So, please. I can't, Charlie. Go away. Frightening me. I got to talk to someone. Honey, I need you. Charlie, don't make me call the police. Please go home. I'm scared, Jill. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm all mixed up. Help me, will you? Help? God, somebody's got to help me. I can't, Charlie. Please go home. I can't. I can't, Charlie. I can't. I know it's not worth it, is it? Or I'm not worth it. I don't blame you, though, Jill. I really don't. Charlie. Go ahead, shoot. You don't want to die. I don't want to live either. Oh. Help me with it, man. I'm sick. This is your tie, isn't it? Yeah. And you do know where we found it. But you don't remember wearing it, taking it off, and using it. No, no, I don't. Listen, Charlie, we know you're in the bedroom. You got your fingerprints all over the place. Now, why'd you kill her? Why, Charlie? Because uh, she was laughing at me. 
and calling me dirty names. She said I was sick. So I had to kill her uh, to stop her from saying those things. She was so soft. I remember feeling my hands on her throat. And I killed her. I killed Joan Warren. Joan Warren? Yes. I'm glad I told you because I know I'll feel better. Well, you killed Mrs. Jessup the same way, didn't you? Did I? You tell me. I remember seeing her lying there. She was so still that at first I thought she was asleep. Yes, go on. Until I reached out and touched her. But you remember killing her? Uh, I must have. Well, then what about the telephone call? You remember calling, don't you? I don't do that anymore. Well, don't you? No. I don't know. Maybe, I maybe. I don't know. I, I'm, I must be crazy. And let that character go. We just broke it. Broke what? What'd you break? The Warren killing. Sure enough, it was Schaflera. Schaflera? Hey, he just confessed. It's with the DA now. Got it all down on paper, signed and sealed. Thanks. Thanks for the congratulations. Bob, we just got the same confession. What? Yeah, that's right. Somebody's got to be lying. OK. You get that polygraph guy back in here first thing in the morning. Mike. Never mind. I know all about the red tape. You just get that machine hooked up and ready to go. Steve, you get Lenny here. It's about time we had our own psychiatrist in on this case. Maybe he can tell us what's going on. Did you look at the clock? Yes. What time was it? 5.30. I remember the, the clock with the monk in it. You said 8 o'clock before. Oh, yeah, yes, that's right. Was the room dark or lit? Dark. When you saw her first, where was she lying? On the floor. And you killed her? I don't know. Your name is Charles Blake? Yes. And you killed Joan Warren? Yes. He's telling the truth. Now I know why they don't allow polygraphs in court. Shaflera said he killed a girl. Blake said he did it. And they're both telling the truth. Or oh, the machine is lying. I like to think that. But what if Blake believes he killed Joan Warren, but he didn't? What are you talking about? Hypnosis? Hypnosis? Oh, come on. All right, it's crazy, but Blake's file shows that Dr. Jessup had him under hypnotherapy. So? So a guy can be hypnotized to believe things that aren't even true. We know that Blake was in the house. We have his prints and his tie. All right, the tie could have been planted, right? Right. Now, Lenny... Blake cannot remember where he was between the hours of 5 and 8. Now, this is just a theory, but is it possible he could have been put into some sort of, uh, I don't know, hypnotic trance for that long a time? I guess so. Go on. If he was in some sort of, I don't know, trance, could he have been made to do things later on after he woke up? It's conceivable, yes, but he had to be very receptive, almost pathological. I think you are both pathological. All I'm saying is it is possible Charles Blake was programmed to believe he killed the girls. That's all. It's conceivable, yes, but, but there's a catch psychologically. 
To make someone confess to a crime he didn't commit, there'd have to be a strong motivation. He'd have to be convinced it was in his own best interest. That something was in it for him. Well, what about, uh, what about relief? You know, when he confessed to us, he told us, I know this is going to make me feel better. A sex offender on probation. Yeah, he's been carrying a heavy load of guilt, that's certain enough. So who called Mrs. Jessup? I'm sure it wasn't her husband. No, no, no. I think she received a phone call from Blake. At least it was his voice. But it was on a tape. You know, we are in Jessup's study, those tapes on the wall. Those are all recorded therapy sessions. I looked at the labels. That's what got me thinking about Jessup in the first place. Homicide, Lieutenant Stone. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Well, they just shook down Chauffleur's apartment, and they found the gold locket in his closet. Okay. Okay, now. Blake is innocent of one murder. And according to you guys, he could be innocent of two murders, right? Yeah. What did you expect to find? What did you? I don't know. Something, anything. I keep looking at these photographs. Bed. Lamp. Broken clock. Stopped at eight. Proves Jessup couldn't be here. That's funny. What's funny? Blake. He said something about a, a monk and a clock. Oh, he said a lot of things we don't understand. Let's do it my way, shall we? Let's just walk through it slowly, huh? Now, he said that he was standing here, right? <sighs> touch it again. You touch it. Go on, will you touch it again, please? I don't want to touch it. Don't be a child. Put your finger on it. Touch it. That's it. That's it. This switch connects the rest of these lamps except for that one. That one is on a separate circuit. I hope you understand the possible entrapment. That's why I call the public defender in here. Mr. Keyser, come in. All set. Huh? Mr. Keyser, this is Dr. Murchison, Hello. our psychiatrist. Charlie! We're ready. Are you? Well, my office hasn't approved any of this yet. I still have a lot of questions. I'll try to answer them for you. Thank you. Oh, come in. Hi, doctor. Hello, inspector. Sit down, please. Thank I'm you. sorry that you had to wait. I've been busy canceling appointments. I'm going to close the office for a while and get out of town for a few days. I suppose that's all right. Of course, no problem. I just came here to ask you a favor. Of course. Well, we removed the police guard from your house this morning. We uh, thought we had all we needed. But something's come up. I was wondering if you had an extra set of house keys we could borrow. I think I do. It's an unusual clock. Ah, oh, yes, it is. You have a pair here somewhere. I understand you have Blake in custody. Well, that's the problem. We had Blake locked up for that Warren murder. He confessed and everything. And now he's been cleared. Oh? Yeah, I don't know why he would lie. But it's brought in some other questions on the case that have to be answered. How's that? Well, you said when you left that your wife was in bed reading, so the light was on. That's right. But Blake, he swears the light was off when he came in, and the polygraph shows he was telling the truth. Of course, it's possible your wife could have turned the lights off. But anyway, the lieutenant wants to check that broken lamp. Because if that was on, well, it only adds to the confusion. 
I can't find this anywhere. Well, don't worry about it, Doctor. I'm sure I must have an extra set down in the department. Just want to save myself a trip. I really don't see what difference it makes. We know he was in the house. Doctor, thank you very much. Sorry oh, to bother you. Not at all. I wish I could have been more help. I know there's a pair there somewhere, but my head is not put together very well today, I'm afraid. Of course. Take care. Goodbye. You forgot to turn it off, Doctor. What are you doing here? Watching you rig some more evidence. That's ridiculous. I... I was curious. My wife has been murdered. I have to know what the truth is. Well, aren't you going to answer your phone? Yeah. Doctor's for you. into my office. That's illegal. Those tapes are confidential and you can't use them against me. My lawyer will tell you that. No, he won't. They didn't break in, Norman. They didn't have to. All they did is what you did. Record Charlie Blake's voice, only this time with his full permission. You're my lawyer. You're supposed to defend me. Norman, I know where my ethics are. I came here to help you. As your lawyer, I don't want you to say another word. As your friend, as Eleanor's friend, I think you'd better retain other counsel. Freedom is rights. does it make? I'm here. How can I tell you what's in my mind? You can't. So can we talk, please? Sure. I want to. Okay. Oh, man, that Jessup was so cool. I never thought we'd get him. Yeah, it's the smart ones who take it hard when they find out how dumb they've been. When'd you first make it? Same time you did. Sure, it was all those coincidences, you know, the lawyer and waiting, the tie left behind, the patient-doctor relationship. Too neat, too smooth. Psychology, that's what did it, you know. That's what pulled us through this time. Good, hard, no psychology. You, come on. Well, that's right, me. Listen, to just don't, don't rush me now. Genericus animus labor natural. How long did you look that up in the dictionary? Too long. <laughs> <laughs>
Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Peter Haskell, Kim Richards, Paul Fix, Patricia Smith, tonight's episode, River of Fear. been bothering you. Mm -hmm. Hey, come on, we're gonna get you something. A new suit, maybe, or a, a tie, or... No. Nope. Well, yes, come on. You've been loading me down with packages, and I haven't gotten you anything. No, the only thing I want from you is to get you back to the hotel right away. Welcome back to the mainland, Mrs. Dunson. Aloha, Dr. Dunson. My mother always wanted me to marry a doctor. Very wise woman, your mother. Not really, just a hypochondriac. <laughs> oh, Bill, it's almost over. It's just beginning. I mean, Hawaii, the honeymoon, the wedding. Like I said, it's just beginning. Something's bothering me, and I want to get it off my mind before we get back to Duncan Falls in the morning. It's something I never told you, and I just don't want any secrets between us. You know, my first husband was convicted of armed robbery. That's ancient history. Besides, the man is dead. No, I want to tell you, he did do it. It doesn't matter. Bill, I still have it. What? The money. I still have it, all of it. $220,000. It's hidden, so that if the children ever need it, I'll take care of Julie and Bobby. Julie knows where it is. In case anything ever happened. And I want you to know, too. Betty, Betty. Betty, 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 Betty. A part of your life belongs to you. Nothing belongs to me. I want everything I am to be yours. For always. Money. You should have returned it, you know that. You still can. You think so? We can, uh, we can explain to the authorities. Tell them that it uh, just turned up. Where is it? In the stable. In the stable. In a brown suitcase, behind the second stall. The third plank up is loose. You will take care of that, lady. You have to get into the tub. And we're going to be late for dinner. Go on, go on. I do love you. And I you. I thought you were going to call for some champagne. Room service, please.
for eight days. We got married there. My wife wanted to stay. But uh, my practice in Duncan Falls, there's only one other doctor. He's about to retire. I guess she knew that, uh, that we wouldn't be getting into the city too much, so we spent the, uh, the entire afternoon shopping. Stuff for her, for the, uh, for the kids. Julie and, uh, and Bobby, they were her children. What am I going to say to them? Was she in the bath before you left? No, she was, uh, she was just getting undressed. What time was that? Five, five thirty. You. I went downstairs to get a haircut. We, uh, we had dinner reservations at eight o'clock. Barber shop in the hotel? Yeah. Lieutenant. Occipital skull fracture. The victim apparently slipped on the tile floor, fell into the tub and hit her head. On what? Uh, I won't have any idea until after the autopsy. Can you give me the time? I'll let you know then. Probably just an accident, Mike. A pretty common one at that. OK, thanks. There's a housekeeper with the kids, and they were expecting a call from the mother this evening. I'd, uh, I'd like to get to them as soon as I can. Well, doctor, if I may make a suggestion, there's going to be a couple of miles of red tape you're going to have to get behind you, so why don't you just call up the housekeeper and tell her what happened? She's calling at 7 30. I'm hungry. Let's go in and get some cherry stuff. I can't believe it. She was such a sweet, dear girl. She's like a daughter to me. I. Oh, yes, Mr. Dunson, I will. Oh. I'm sorry. I was thinking of myself and forgetting how awful this must be for you. Yeah, I'll call Dr. White first and whoever else. No, I'll take care of everything. Thank you for calling. Mom's going to call at 7.30. Julie said so. Well, uh, things are different in San Francisco. She, uh, she might be late, and uh, 7.30 is your bedtime, Bobby. Who was on the phone, Mrs. Rand? Well, it was just, um... Well, now I'm entitled to a personal call. Isn't that so? Everything check out? Just like he said, yeah. That's got to be tough. They only met four months ago. Duncan Falls? Yeah, there's an advertisement for a new doctor. She had a house up there. A little summer business, you know, the tourists. Not to support the kids. Kids, huh? It's going to be tough on them. Well, he said he was going to adopt them. I guess that's what she'd want. After he makes a break. Oh, now, come, come, Emma. There'll be plenty of time for that. Are they uh, asleep? Yeah, about an hour ago. They don't know, then? I couldn't tell them. I'll let Mr. Dunson. You uh, still can't call him doctor, eh? As far as I'm concerned, you're still the only doctor in Duncan Falls. Can I make you some hot chocolate? You got any brandy? Yes, I think so. Get two glasses. I'm afraid it's going to be a long night for both of us. Uh, 
I brought her into this world 34 years ago. Upstairs. Her mother didn't believe in hospitals. I suppose she'll be brought back to Duncan Falls. Buried here. Where else? She was such a kind and thoughtful human being. I never felt like a housekeeper. She made me feel like one of the family. We're all gone now. Except her sister, Helen, over in Edenton. One of the first families in these parts, along with mine. I've got to go over and see Mrs. Knox for a while. It's probably nothing but false labor, but if I don't get back, I'll look in on you first thing in the morning. Get up. Come on, it's a secret. Now, I'll be back later if I can. I understand, Doctor. Go to Aunt Helen's. Why would we need help? In case something bad happened. But it didn't. Maybe it did, Bobby. You wait what? I gotta help get this back. It's Mom! She came home early. That's Redwood. He never barks when Mom's around. He only barks at Dunson. All right, Redwood, go on. Go on. He'll wake the children. I didn't expect you until morning. I did what had to be done. Yeah, just... Uh... I couldn't stay in that hotel for another minute. I'm so sorry, Mr. Dunson. So, I thought they were asleep. No, it's just as well. I might as well get this over with. Tonight? Oh, don't you think you... I'll be gentle. Julie? Julie, wait. 
wake up. Yeah? Something's happened to your mother. I know. She's dead. How did you know? I heard Mrs. Rand on the phone. And then Doc White came by, talked about it. Oh, so. Does Bobby know you? No. Well, I'll tell him in the morning. No. He'd rather hear it from me. And then. Oh, there you are. Julie told Bobby. They're both in there crying themselves to sleep. I'll just sit with them for a while. Good night, Mr. Dunson. Something troubling you? Yeah. All right, here's the point of impact on the woman's skull. Yeah? Now, these are photographs that were taken in the bathroom the way the body was found. Now, Bernie says whatever she hit was a blunt object two inches in diameter. A faucet? And I put it through the glass, and you can see it's beveled. It's not blunt. Well, nothing else in here the same size? Not in the pictures, nope. Well, what are you thinking? I think we ought to go back and take another look. You got anything else on these people? Not yet. All right, I guess you'd better run them both through our eye. Okay. Hey, you're right about the edges. Bevel, pretty sharp. Hey, what about this? Well, the right size, maybe, but uh, tell me. How would she end up in the tub? Yeah, this is Inspector Keller. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Tanner's got the info from r and Are you sure this guy's a doctor? Well, that's what he told us. Yeah, why? Well, he doesn't show up with the State Board of Medical Examiners. I called Sacramento. You're kidding. Uh-uh. I checked back 10 years, and there's never been a Dr. William Fitzpatrick Dunson in California during that whole period. Would you check the, uh, the National Registry? Yeah, called Chicago, AMA headquarters. What? There's no listen of Dunson being a doctor. Is he sure? I heard that. 
Tell a lieutenant it's been checked and double-checked. He's positive, yeah. What do you think? I don't know. Yeah, is there any record of uh, the same name but without the MD? Yeah, still checking. Got something interesting on that woman, though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, Bill. Yeah, thanks a lot. What's he got? The woman's death certificate says she was married before to a Calvin Todd. Now, Tanner ran it through R&I. What's this, uh, died, uh, Q-128? Yeah, he died while he was serving time in San Quentin. For what? Armed robbery. $220,000 unrecovered. Well, now, that's a pretty big leap you're making. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I know. I know. But it's possible. It's a pretty good motive for marriage. Even murder. You know, if I were you, I think I'd have the lab come up here right away. Okay. Blunt object. Uh, it's about two inches in diameter. If there's nothing else, I'll go do the beds. Fine, thank you. I, uh, I hope you both realize that I'm going to take care of you. And we don't know each other very well yet, but we'll get to it. I promise you that. Mother told me a, a lot about you. She told me about the money. In the suitcase. Well, I'm going to get the bank to take care of that for you. As soon as you tell me where you moved it. Moved what? The money in the suitcase. I don't know nothing about any money. And besides, it's empty. I know. Duh. Oh, Julie. Julie, everything's going to be all right. What are we going to do? Oh, now, don't you worry. You and Bobby have lots of friends, wonderful people who care about you both. Bill. Doc. I, uh, sorry to hear the bad news. I thought I should come over. That's good of you. Maybe I could take the kids for a little ride and talk about a few things. We're just doing that. Where were Julie? Well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I just thought that since I've known their mama all of her life that... Oh, thank you. I don't think it's really necessary. Yes, we'd like it very much, wouldn't we, Bobby? Yeah. All right with you? Sure. Why not? We'll talk when you get back. I'll wait for you, Julie. Oh, Bill, I was going to stop by Mamie Dollinger's on my way to the office. Would you mind? No, I'll stop by now. Thanks. Todd for a slip disc. He died on a Sunday. I was away at the time. Oh, come on, JB. Don't tell me he died of a slip disc. Nope. Heart attack. Do you have any previous record of a heart condition? No, none that I can see, but that doesn't mean... Was there an autopsy? Yes, of course. It was confirmed by the medical examiner. May I ask who found the body? An orderly named Cooper, James Cooper, one of the inmates. Oh, yes. 
I remember him. Pretty good man. Knew his medicine. He was discharged some months back. This Cooper, uh, what did he look like? Oh, six foot. Trim. Late 30s. Blue eyes, graying hair, good talker, bright. That's right. You know him? Maybe. Doctor, there's a lot of ways to make it look like somebody died of a heart attack, aren't there? Well, yes. And could this Cooper have access to those kind of drugs? I suppose so. Well, could he have taken these drugs and injected them into your patient? Now, look, Mike, there was no reason to suspect anything like that. There may be now. See you. Thanks. Sad Doc. What? Dunson. I know about him. He's not really sad that Mama died. Well, that's not so. He scares me sometimes. And Bobby, too. Yeah. And I don't think he's a real doctor either. Well, now, that's a peculiar thing to say, young lady. Well, every time a patient calls, he says he has to go to the other line. Then he goes and he looks up in these medical books. Then comes back and tells him what to do. Well, no. That can be very good medical practice. Double checking like that. But, Doc, we don't have to phone. Yeah, and he lies. He wanted to give me a tetanus shot for a scratch. See? Here. And you told me that you only needed a booster shot when you punctured your skin. Remember, Doc? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much about Bill Dunson. What about a uh, James Cooper? Where'd you get this? It's on Quentin. He served time there, same time as Calvin Todd. Think he knows about the money Bill Todd stole? We think so, yeah. Think maybe Betty's death wasn't an accident. Well, we don't have proof of that yet. What can I do to help? Give us some names, people we can talk to. And uh, we'd like to keep this in a low profile. Sure. It's me, Myrtle. Anybody dying? Two detectives from San Francisco want to talk to you. And Dr. Dunson needs you at the Dullinger place. Detectives? What do they want? They didn't exactly say. Asked me about Dr. Dunson. And what did you tell them? I told them I wouldn't let him treat me for heat rash on my left pinky. Well, you never told me you felt that way about Dunson. You never asked. All right. All right, Myrtle. I'll go by Mrs. Dollinger's. Meantime, you do just what you want with your pinky. <laughs> Give her 10 milligrams of escadine tartrate. You know, I've been thinking about the Lucas boy. Maybe we ought to get him out of traction and get him to exercise. What do you think, Bill? I've been throwing around with the same idea myself, Doc. Who are you? You're no doctor. If we took the Lucas boy out of traction, he wouldn't have a chance. And the injection I just prescribed for Mrs. Dollinger is a lethal dose. Before I came here, two detectives from San Francisco stopped by to talk to me about you. Now you tell me, Dunson, who the hell are you? Is anything wrong, Dr. Dunson? Dr. White, I tried to ask Dr. Dunson. It's going to be all right. I'll be back later. Dunson, Dunson, come back here. Come back here.
don't scare like the kids, Judson. Oh, well, uh, that's good, Doc. Hmm? Because there's nothing really to be frightened of. And what I what I do know about this stuff is that it's uh, it's painless. And it's uh, very quick. <laughs> Janice Dollinger. She lives up the road a ways. Says Doc White and Dunson left her place 30 minutes ago. Did they leave together, ma'am? Well, it was very peculiar. First Dr. Dunson rushed out, and then Dr. White left a minute later. They both seemed kind of upset. Janice was on her way to do some marketing in Duncan Falls. She found Doc White. Could have been a heart attack, uh, Lieutenant. No sign of any violence. Oh, come on, Sheriff. You don't believe in coincidences, do you? Not this time. I guess. Well, I'd appreciate it if you'd have that ambulance take him to the nearest corner. Well, that'd be Santa Rosa. How far is it to the Todd farm? About 30 minutes south on the main highway. Along here? Yeah. Thank you. Maybe the doctor and Dunson were in on it together. Nah, you heard what the sheriff said about Doc White. He spent his whole life in the same little town looking after other people's welfare. Doesn't square. Yeah. The doctor must have found out something and Dunson was afraid he was gonna talk. And I keep wondering why Dunson's still hanging around. I mean, if he killed his wife for the money, he'd want to find out where that money was before he did it, right? Right. So why didn't he just get it and go? Because he thought we'd believe him. And we almost did. This way he could stick around, take off in the clear later on. I keep wondering about those two kids that the woman had. What about them? Well, if you were a widow, you had all that money and you hadn't spent it, what would you be saving it for? For the kids? That's it. You say maybe the kids know where the money is. Well, you'd want them to know, wouldn't you? Just in case. So Dunson's sticking around because the kids got the money first and he doesn't know where to find it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Stay here. Julie, 
what'd you do that for? Now we'll have to walk all the way to Aunt Helen's. We can make it. But Dunstan won't be following us anymore. He'll follow the horse. At least that's what they do in the movies. Come on, help me. Too heavy. I'm not going to leave it behind. I just don't know where else to look. Do well, they usually come back for lunch? We have an understanding. They can wander off, but they'll show up come lunchtime. And you haven't seen Mr. Dunson since breakfast? No, sir. Why? Bermuda. She's gone. Bermuda, is that a horse? Yeah, she belongs to the children. And Brindle's gone, too. Now, that's got to be where they are. Well, is there anywhere special that they would ride off to? Well, yes, these... Woods are full of trails. They go clear here from here to Healdsburg and Cloverdale. Hey, Mike? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. That's about the size, all right. Just one who got to it first. Either he's got it and gone, or the kid's got it and he's after it. The kids come first, either way. Mrs. Rand, we want to phone the sheriff. We want him to start a search party. He's gone now. Come on. I'm hungry. We'll be dead, Helen's for supper. Come on, help me. I can't carry it anymore. Okay. Well, hide it somewhere and come back later with Aunt Helen. Any sign of them? No, but I got a search party looking four ways. Doc White didn't die of a heart attack either. He was murdered. It says here, a massive dose of some drug, escadine tartrate, directly into the stomach. Well, now, is there any small town in this area where the children could have friends or relatives in? Well, there's Miss Baker, their maiden aunt, Miss Helen Baker. But she lives way over in Edenton. All right, give us her address and telephone number, please. must have been scared. You know, you really upset Dr. Dunstan. He's afraid he's to blame for your running off. Do you know how worried you two made me? I certainly hope you don't plan to do anything like that again. And Helen. No, I think we bothered your Aunt Helen enough for today. Come on, it's time to be getting on. No, he killed Mama. It's all right, Helen. I've been through a lot. Don't listen to him. He killed Mama and Doc White, too. What are you talking about? It's all this talk about death. It's frightened them, confused them. And Helen, please, you could call Doc White and see for yourself. He killed him for the money. The money Mama had hidden in the stable. That's enough, Julie. They should be under sedation, Helen. I think you better let me take them home. No, I, I don't think so. 
You're right. They're just exhausted. They could stay with me for tonight until they've calmed down. And then... And then, after I'm gone, you make a telephone call? All right, Julie, where is it? In the woods, hidden somewhere? I won't tell you. Yes, you will. This time, you will tell me. This time, you will show me exactly where the woods are. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Nothing's out of order. How far is it to Eden? Eight, ten minutes. Come on, let's go. Thank you, Hammond. I want the money, Julie. I want it all, and I want it now. Now, you make up your mind if you're going to play any more tricks. Because I've decided what's going to happen to you if you do. So the truth. All right? Just the truth. It's in the tree. Julie! Another well of snakes, huh, Julie? You're lying, aren't you? Wait, don't hurt her. I'll tell you. We hid it in an old shed by the river. Bobby! I had to tell him, Julie. I had to. Okay, thank you, Bobby. I'd like the keys to your car now, Helen. Don't hurt them, please. Don't hurt them. You know where it is now. Just come. They go with me. No! Yes. Listen to me, Helen. Things have not gone exactly the way I planned. The police already suspect what I have done. So I really don't have anything to lose if I go a little further. You understand me, don't you? Please. I have to move very quickly now, so I have no reason to kill you. Unless you give me one. And I have no reason to hurt them. Unless they give me one. But I don't think that they'll do that now. Will you? All right, let's go. I'll contact you later, tell you where you can pick the kids up. And Helen, don't even think about talking to anyone until you hear from me. Miss Baker, this is the police. Miss Baker. Sheriff? Oh, I'm sorry. I was in the back. I didn't hear you. Miss Baker, this is Lieutenant Stone with the San Francisco Police Department. He's looking for Bill Dunson. Has he been here? Bill, I know. No, he hasn't. Now, we called you before we left. Looks like we were right, Steve. Two horses outside in the shed. Listen, please. I know you mean well, but... How long will they leave, man? I, I, I don't know. I can't tell How you. How long will they leave? We know he has the children. What did he tell you? That he wouldn't hurt them? That he'd keep them safe if you didn't say anything? I can't tell you anything. The only way these kids are going to be safe, he'd tell us where they're going and he'd tell us fast. You do know, don't you? Please, I don't know what to do. I don't all right. know what to do. All right, all right, all right. I am not going to tell you to do anything. This is going to have to be your choice. You're going to make up your mind. They said it was in the old shed on the river. Must be the one by the footbridge. They said they hid the money there. You know where it is? Yeah. Thank you.
Steal that money? Mm hmm. Is that why I had to go away? That's right. And uh, this money's gonna have to go back to the people he took it from. For a reward, right? For a big reward. And I think it belongs to the two of you. These are silver certificates. See, they're out of circulation, aren't they? Yeah, but they're worth a lot more. Come on, we better go tell Aunt Helen we're all right. Yeah. That's the trouble with kids today. Right. They don't understand the value of a dollar. San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Marriott Hartley, Clint Howard, David Bruner, Marge Redmond. Tonight's episode, Cry Help. said we had a gun, a real gun. But she never said where. Your mother's not home? No. You better run along. Yes, sir. She's 
supposed to be here when you get home from school. She tells me she always is. Well, you said you wouldn't be home till late tonight, maybe early tomorrow morning. So she figures she can check out for a while, huh? Is that what happens every time I go on the road? Is it? Is it? Hey, I don't know. Well, you do know where your mother is, don't you? Is she with somebody? Who's she with? Well, you mean like with one of the neighbors? I mean a man. Now, who is she with? Answer me. Answer me. Don't! I don't know! I want an answer. I don't know where she is! Don't! This time I'm calling the police. Don't. I don't know! Don't. Headquarters report of a possible 240 in progress at 589 Haywood. Any other units in the vicinity? 240. Oh, child beating. Yes, yeah, a couple blocks away. Inspectors A1 to headquarters. We'll respond to that possible 240. Charlie. to be home after school. So you hit Paul because I wasn't, because you were mad at me? Now, don't you lecture me about that. Not you. I just wanted to know where you were. And I still do. Come on, Bob. Just because we're married doesn't make me your slave, you know? I have a right to lead a life of my own. Oh, yeah? Well, you know, that depends on just who you're leading it with. Police? Are you from the police? Yes, ma'am, yeah. It's a heron boy right up here. This isn't the first time that it happened. We've beaten him before. Are you sure of that, Mr. Uh, Russell? Mr. Russell. You've got yeah. to stop it. Sure. All hours of the day and night, we can hear that boy screaming sometimes. You just stay down there. We'll do all we can. I know what you're doing, Bonnie, and I'm not going to put up. Hello? Hello? I can't. Hello? Mrs. Harris? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Stone. This is Inspector Keller. We received a report that there's a problem here. May we come in? It's just a family argument, Lieutenant. Well, did that family argument involve your son here, Mr. Harris? I slapped Paul. I... It's not something that I'm proud of. You okay? Yes, sir. I never hit him before. God help me, I won't do it again. Excuse me, but the call we got over the radio was about a child beating. And we just heard that it's happened before. Paul, take your jacket and shirt off. Just a minute, Lieutenant. The boy said he was all right. It's, it's over now. Mrs. Harris, our job is to make sure of that. Paul, would you please take off your shirt? <laughs> I want you to be honest with me. Did your father do this to you? He's not my father. 
this is Paul's stepfather, Lieutenant. Oh, I see. Paul? Well, I, I fell down some stairs. You know, at school, they're, they're real high. He has a, a balance problem. We're having a doctor check into it soon. Yes, you do that. I'll put it in our report along with everything else. No, don't bother. Stay right here. Thank you very much. Aren't you going to do anything? Well, we've done all we can. We'll call Juvenile Hall now. I just don't know how she allows it. Her own son. Well, that's one I can't answer, Steve. I only know when you respond to a 240, a child beating call, it's ugly. It's one of the ugliest. See, was that kid standing over there when we drove in? I think so, yeah. Hi. You live here? What's your name? Tommy. Are you a friend of Paul's? You guys are cops. Came by to help Paul. Tommy, how'd you like to do your friend a favor? Can you tell us what happened at Paul's? Did you see anything? If you tell us, maybe we can do something about it. No, you can't. You can't do anything! All day? Yeah. Half lunch? No. Here. Go on, I saved it for you. I'm not hungry. Take it anyway. that bad with your folks, too? Worse. What did you do? Here goes algebra. Ah, two points. I heard you got in trouble. Who told you that? Mom. She doesn't want us hanging around together. Just a kid then. Everything's different now. Do you like living with the Sanders? Yeah. They're great. Don't you ever miss her? Your real mom? Not anymore. I'd never feel that way. I wouldn't care what she did. She doesn't mean it. I know that. Well, I gotta get going. Trash man comes tomorrow, and I gotta empty the waste baskets and stuff. You coming? Gotta go home sometime. Come on, I'll race you. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Tommy. Can't you stay for a while? 
Bob? Bob? What are you doing? Think I have your mind? Stop it! It's got to Bob this and we can talk about it. Talk? I want to talk when all this time I've been feeling guilty for suspecting you and you've been spending your afternoons with him. But you don't know what you're doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. No, Bob. Bob, stop it. Put it back. Oh. Bob, are you crazy? Put it back. Mom? 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 And I'm calling in again. Somebody's been shot. Struggled. I mean, all I wanted to do was to get the gun away, to talk to the man rationally. And he thought you were seeing another man? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, he was crazy like that. He was jealous of any man I even smiled at. Anyway, Paul, um, Paul tried to help. Bob knocked him down. And Tommy... Tommy's last name, that's, uh, that's Sanders, is that right? Yes. Well, what exactly was it that he did? Well, Bob dropped the gun, and Tommy picked it up. And then, and then, oh, God. Oh, dear God. He shot your husband? <laughs> Mrs. Harris, do you have any idea what made him pick up the gun and shoot it? No. No, I, I watched it happen, and it, it all happened so quickly. I think he thought he was trying to help. And there was... there was nothing that I could do. But Tommy was standing right over here when he pulled the trigger, is that correct? Yes. And, uh, do you know where we can find him now? He lives about a block up on the next street over. Paul, what's the address? Paul, what is it? Come on. It's a... Uh, it's a fourth house. It's on the far corner. It's on the left side. Thank you. Do you have a doctor, a family doctor? Yes. Well, I think it would be wise if you and the boy took a mild sedative. Oh. Oh, thanks. We'll be all right. Thank you. Lieutenant! Yes? I, uh... I, I never liked Tommy playing with Paul. I never liked it. One of the neighbors said that he'd done some bad things, some juvenile problems. He even had a record. Record? What was it for? Oh, no, no, I, uh, I didn't listen. It was gossip. I, I didn't... Uh... That's all right. We'll check it out. Goodbye. Bye, Paul. Mom, what are they going to do to Tommy? He'll be all right, Paul. He's just a young boy. He'll be all right. But what did he do before? I told you, I don't know. Didn't you hear me? I don't know. Yes, ma'am.
Tommy couldn't do such a thing. Well, that's why we're here. We wanted to hear Tommy's side of the story. May we talk to him, please? Willie, uh, he isn't here. I haven't seen him since this morning. But, but Tommy is, is not the kind of a boy that you can hold on to too tightly. He's, he needs room. He needs trust. More than most boys his age? Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, Tommy is our foster son. Dave and I, that's my husband. We love Tommy very much. And we're trying to help him learn to live with his past and overcome it. I, I just can't believe that anything like what you're saying could happen again. Again, ma'am, I... Uh... Just what is it Tommy has to overcome? Brutality. Ugliness. A nightmare no child should have to live through. You see, Tommy's parents, his mother drank. She couldn't even make a decent home. And she was more afraid of losing her husband than she was of anything else in her life. And he, well, he apparently blamed his wife and his boy for all of his own failures. And then one night, about six years ago, Tommy was eight. His father started in on his mother, beating her. A child like that, I, all he knew was that he, it was his mother and he loved her, needed her. Anyway, he got a gun. A rifle. And, and he shot his own father. You can't do anything. What? That's what Tommy told us the other day, remember? You can't do anything. Hey, Mike, you're gonna have to put out an APB. Yeah, I gotta find him. I know, I know. But he must have been scared when he pulled that trigger. I'll bet he's a lot more scared right now. Yeah, we have to help him, and fast. Well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe we ought to give it one more shot first, just the two of us. Kid's probably got some hangouts. So maybe the social worker handles the case with them. You're right, it's worth a try. Try to calm down, Ruth. I'm sorry, Dave, I'm sorry. It's all right, take it easy, just take it easy, but try to remember everything, everything. Yes. Now, the police were here when, how long ago? I don't know, just a few minutes. It was just before I phoned you. Oh, Dave, I didn't mean to worry you with that message, but I was so scared, all of a sudden I didn't know what to do. All and right, I all right. Now, the police actually told you that Tommy shot someone? Yes. Did they see him do it? No. It was the woman. What woman? Oh, she was the mother of, of the boy he was playing with. I think their name was Harris. They're positive? She described everything that happened to them. My God. Where did the gun come from? I don't know. How could he have gotten his hands on a gun? Well, it was theirs. It must have been in the house somewhere. And then they said Tommy ran? Yes. I mean, how did something like this happen? Tommy! You believed it. Tommy! Where were you? You believe it? What? What they said, do you believe it? Tommy, I want you to come in here and sit down. You do? Tommy! You do! No! Tommy! Tommy! You all right? Yeah. What are you thinking? Nothing.
need some. It's all over now, you know. Hey. Brought you something. <laughs> it's supposed to be for your birthday, but... Thanks. You gonna open it? You're all mixed up, aren't you? I... I got a confession to make to you. I'm kind of mixed up, too. I need you, Polly. You know that, don't you? I know I don't... I don't act like it a lot. But I need you now more than ever. Be... Just... Just the two of us. When, when your daddy left. Mom? Yeah. Won't he ever come back? No. Why not? Oh, Mom. Mom, please, what did I do? No, no, Paul, honey, you didn't do anything. You're mad again. No, no, Paul, I'm not. I'm not mad. It's all right. What's all right? That you're mad at me. I think I'm old enough now that I can understand. Understand what? Why you blame me for Daddy's leaving? Oh, Paul, that's not true. Mom, it's Mom, not... please. You said you were mixed up, too. Was it about me or was it about Tommy? What? If it's about me, it's okay. Really, I understand now, and it's okay. But Tommy... Oh, shut up, Paul. Mom. Shut up! Mom, please! Just can't do shut anything! Up. Mom! Mom! Okay, I just wish I could say thanks, Charlie. What? That was a lab. The gun is lousy with prints. Two sets of adults and some that have to match your kids. Tommy's? Yeah. Smeared. All of them are smeared. Except one match his. What's that, the ballistics report? Yep. Open and shut, 45 caliber and a 45 service issue. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Sanders called in. Tommy came home, but he took off again. Did you get out an APB? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the heat's on. I'm police force looking for a 14-year-old kid. I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Now, I don't like this any more than you do. 
but we got to find the kid. Especially when he's down on himself like the Sanders say he could be. Giving up on himself and everybody else. Homicide, Lieutenant Stone. Yeah? Yeah, where? Okay, you stay with him and keep us posted. Tommy's mother? Yeah. Nothing. Are you sure the child welfare doesn't have another location on her? They gave you the last one they have in L.A. She left L.A. three months ago, no forwarding address. Could uh, Tommy have gotten in touch with her? No, they wouldn't know. Well, maybe she got in touch with him. There's no way the agency would never give her the address. Look, why don't we call and talk to Paul Harris? He was a friend of Tommy's. Maybe he'd know where he'd go. All right. I guess we better talk to him. That's all you can do is just keep digging, dig, dig, dig. I'm sorry, son, but $2.52 won't take you to L.A., not even on a kid's ticket. How far will it take me? Local bus. Oakland, maybe. Tell you what I'd do if I was you, though. I'd complain to the interstate commerce people after I got home. Look, son, I don't know what your folks are sore about, but they'll cool off. Take it from a guy who's been there. Doesn't help to run away. Son. Son. Hi, Paul. Hi. Is your mother home? No. Well, you think she'd mind if we came in for a minute? I don't know. Just a minute. I'd like to talk to you about something. I guess so. Hey, what happened? Have an accident? I was trying to fix it. Oh, hell. Looks like you got a pretty good repair shop here. <laughs> uh, you said you wanted to talk. Yes. Yes, I do. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your friend, Tommy. Did you find him yet? No. No, no, not yet. What's going to happen to him if you do? Uh, well, that's not really up to us. We're just trying to find him, make sure he's all right. You know where he is? Are you going to put him in jail? No. No, no, we don't put children in jail. Well, what do you do with them? Well, we take him to juvenile hall for a while until the judge decides what's best for him. Well, what if they've been in trouble before? You know about Tommy's background? Just that he had to live with somebody else. Is that what could happen this time? Well, there's special courts to take care of things like what your mother said Tommy did. No, no. Mom said they wouldn't do anything to him because he's just a kid. She said it's not like if... If what? If he was a grown-up. She said things would be different then. But they wouldn't do anything to Tommy. That's all. Where's your mother now? She had to go out. She go see somebody or what? I don't know. She just made a phone call and went out. Yeah, let's get back to Tommy. Do you know where he might be? No. Oh, some secret place maybe that the two of you would like to go when you wanted to be alone? No. Your mother said Tommy was standing up here when he fired the gun. I guess. Well, was he? Yeah. And where were you? Right by Tommy. Why? I'm just being curious. Paul, I'm afraid this ship has had its last voyage. Unless you're a better mechanic than I am. Looks brand new. Is it? Yeah. Well, who gave it to you? Got it from my mom. Steve! What do you say? Yeah, okay. Listen, Paul, good luck with your boat. Yeah, thanks. Listen, if you happen to remember where he is, just let us know, will you? Okay. Goodbye, Paul. It's a good ship, and I wish I had one. We'll see you.
Just what did you pitch in there? Phone number? Since you got a phone call left, I figured maybe that'll tell us where she went. And that stuff about where were you standing? What's all that about? Two kids, they were standing right next to each other. Oh, now, wait a minute. What? Are you saying that this kid pulled the trigger? This is the kid that Harris beat up. But Tommy was the kid that ran. I think Tommy has been running all his life. At least that's the impression I got when we were talking with Mrs. Sanders. Well, are you thinking that Paul's mother lied just to protect him? Is there a mother's natural instinct to want to protect her child? He sees his mother and father fighting. He finally gets a chance to get back at the man that's been beating him up. He picks up the gun and he shoots it. Could be. Well, let's see where this leads us. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, are we supposed to know that kid? You mean the kid Homicide's looking if for? If to make, you better call it in. Central Florida headquarters. Spotted suspect of ABB for murder warrant. Headed west at Market in Pine. Partner in pursuit on foot. <laughs> Sure, this is the place? Yeah, this is the uh, address they gave me. Oh, Ed Cooper, can I help you fellas? Yeah, my name is uh, Stephen Keller. This is Lieutenant Stone. Oh, yeah. You handle a case involving a family named Harris, or Robert Harris? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we could talk alone for a moment? Well, I guess so, sure. Say, uh, I wasn't aware of this service. Maybe you need publicity. Good thought, Lieutenant. But child abuse is something most people don't want to hear about. They just keep hoping it's going to stop on its own. Well, let's see here. No way. Lieutenant, I'm sorry. But it looks like we're going to have to use my private office. What, this is your private office, Mr. Cooper? I always thought it was mine. <laughs> well, this is where it's happening, isn't it? It certainly <laughs> is. And the name is Ed. This is strictly a first-name operation. All volunteers and all former bad guys. You were one of these guys? That's right. But it's been a long time for me now. And I'm hoping I can help keep somebody else from going through what I went through. What I put my son through before I got help. So now I, uh, I man the phones once a week and hope that some other abuser will call up and cuss me or talk or just cry instead of taking out his frustration on his kids. And that's the cause, huh? Frustration. Well, I'll tell you, Lieutenant. I've got a library on the subject at home. There are so many causes that nobody's sure. Now, the only thing that is sure is the damage that's done. 250,000 children are beaten or injured every year. 35,000 of them end up seriously hurt. Two of them die every day at the hands of the people who were supposed to love them. What do you think caused Mr. Harris to lay into Paul the way he did? 
Mr. Harris? Yeah. Mr. Harris had no problem that I was aware of. Wait a minute. It was her. It... Paul's mother, it was her. Did she call today? Now listen, Lieutenant. I'm not a doctor. And I know what she told me isn't legally confidential information. But I just wouldn't feel right telling you guys what we talked about. You wouldn't feel right about a 14-year-old boy being accused of murder that he didn't commit? Now, would you, Ed? We got the call. Where is he? Lost in Lieutenant. We know he got off the bar at Lexington. All right, he doesn't live too far from here, so he probably knows this area better than we do. Check the lumber yard. Don't stop. Get going. Around the block. Come on. Keep moving. So what do you think? Just keep it moving. I don't want to think. Tommy? Tom? Tommy, are you here? Tommy, I'm sorry. I am. Mom said it would be all right. They wouldn't do anything to you. Tommy, the police came to the house again today, just a little while ago. What'd you tell him? Nothing. I couldn't. Not even about this place? <sighs> no. <sighs> Tommy, I didn't know what to do. It's okay. I just couldn't tell what really happened. I couldn't. I know. Maybe you just better go now, okay? Are you gonna be all right? Like your mom said, I'll be okay. I'll see ya. Yeah. Come here, Paul. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Is he inside, Paul? Where's Tommy Hyde? Don't hurt him. Please don't hurt him. He didn't do anything. I'll get him. Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. Okay. 
you can tell me. It's all right. Nobody wants to hurt you. All we want to do is help. I think I did it too, don't you? Well, did you? Doesn't matter. Oh, come on. It matters a lot, especially to your mother and father. Oh, I heard her talking to him. She thought I did it too. Well, I don't know what you heard, but I know what she thinks about you. But she told me herself. That's right, yeah. And right now, she's pretty scared with you running off like this. So why don't we go on home so she'll know you're all right, okay? Come on. What about Paul? We're going to want to talk to Paul's mother, too. Steve, uh, we'll wait for him in there. What's the matter? What do you want me to do? I thought you wanted to prosecute him. No. No, I don't want to do that. Does he... does he have to be? You said he killed your husband. Oh, but he was just trying to help. I mean, he was just a young kid who was, who was trying to help. Well, you saw him pull the trigger, didn't you? You said he picked up the gun and shot your husband. And that's what you said, didn't you? What did he say? Now, you know he said something entirely different. He lied. Did he? Or did you? Isn't that what the Parent Child Center is trying to help you stop? Lying to yourself and to everybody else? We know how Paul got those welds. Mrs. Harris, you knew about Tommy's problem, didn't you? You thought we would hold that against him. Take the blame off of you. A 14-year-old boy. Now, you pulled that trigger, didn't you? Don't lie. It's okay. 
Some things are hard. Thanks, huh? Mm-hmm. How are things working out? Oh, fine, Lieutenant, just fine. A little crowded with both of them in the same room, but my husband says that's why they build bunk beds. You know what? Your husband's right. <laughs> and how's Tommy's adoption coming? It'll be final next week. That's terrific. Yes, it is. But you know what the best part is? What's that? At night, when they're supposed to be asleep, and we can hear them laugh. of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Murray Hamilton, Burr DeBenny, Tonight's episode, License to Kill. Here's your coffee. I'll get that grapefruit right away.
shot in a, in a black car. It just took off that way. I'll take this in. You try to pick up the car. How you doing, Ray? Fine, how are you? Anybody see what happened? Not in here. Boy, there saw the shooting outside, though. Outside? What do you mean outside? Uh, yes, sir, near the corner. There, there was just a lot of shooting. I picked this up off the street. The guy who dropped it got hit and took off. My partner went after him. One bullet, point blank. Nobody heard it? The silencer, Mike. Must have been a hit. The license says, uh, Robert Olson. Anybody know him? I did. I mean, I never knew his name. But he came in regular every morning. You talked to him then? Well, no, just to take his order. He never really said much. You didn't see who shot him? Uh, I saw him, the guy who dropped the gun. Oh, good. Can you tell me what he looked like? Uh, well, he was, um, he was tall, you know, and, and kind of thin. Uh -huh. How tall? Well, I don't know, maybe over six feet. You see, I never really got a good look at him because everything happened so fast. I mean, there was this other guy shooting down at him, and he fell. And then he sort of crawled into this car, and it took off. What would the other guy look like? Well, now, he was, he was kind of old, but he really moved fast. How old, son? Well, I don't know. Can you guess? About like you. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, come on, show me outside. The, the one who was doing all the shooting was up over there, and the guy crossed the street, and this is where he got shot, right here. Uh, see, look, this is where he fell. You can see it right here. Looks like the other guy didn't miss. Yeah, and then after the shooting, then this car that was right here pulled around the side, and the door was hanging open. The guy kind of crawled in, and then they just drove off. Who's they? Yeah, th there was another guy in there with him. Uh, he yelled something. What did he yell, a name? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What was the name? Uh... The... It was, it was Waco. That was it. Yeah, he yelled, Waco, get in. Waco? Yes. You sure that's what he said? Yeah, I'm sure. Does that mean something? Yeah, maybe. Lieutenant, I'm Officer Mapes. I tried to collar the guy that was doing all the shooting, but I lost him. Describe him. Well, he's not too tall, stocky. Check top coat, uh, gray hat, black shoes. I never saw his face. All right, I want a full report. What's your name, son? Uh, Eddie Myers. Well, do you mind giving your name and address to this officer? We may want to talk to you again later. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's check out those prints. Think you know who they belong to? I'll bet on it. Well, that's a break. He's got a good idea then on who pulled the trigger. What makes you say that? Well, if he's as old as you are... OK, there's... OK, that's not being very kind. <laughs> Keep you waiting long? Not long. How you been, Al? I know you. You did. A while back. Yeah, uh, uh, um, uh, Lou Jack. Good for you. Bet you remember a punk named Johnny Waco, too. Waco, uh, yeah, well, I haven't seen Johnny around for about a year now. He works around, you know? Yeah, I know. But he's back in town now. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I would. I just shot him. Well, he's not dead. Not yet. But he will be when I find him. You tell him that. Hey, you're crazy. You just get word to him. I want him to know it's me. I want him to know I won't miss next time. Yeah, well, how do I do that? Oh, you've got connections. 
I'd bet your life on it. Bet you would. Where you be? Around. That's right, Officer Mapes. Will you find him and tell him I want his report on my desk in an hour? What have you got? Uh, I got the yellow sheet on Johnny Waker. Just like you said, it is a long one. No prints on the gun? Like you said, yeah. The FBI's got a one on him, too. This guy's got 13 suspected hits, three in California. Last address is in L.A. Well, what's he doing here? Well, I did a little cross-check. It turns out he's been working for a Merle Jackson over in Oakland. And the dead man? That ties to. He was a bag man for Jackson. He was doing a little skimming and... Mm-hmm. That all fits. What well, doesn't fit why someone shot Waco? Well, that could be the setup. What, Jackson hires Waco to kill Olsen and he kills Waco? Sure, it's been done before. Yeah, yeah bullets are cheaper than money. And nobody talks from the grave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a setup. Now take it easy, Johnny. I'm telling you that Jackson doesn't operate that way. Look, would I come here with your money if he tried to double cross you? Sure. And you found out I wasn't dead. No, that's, that's just not true. Now, what do I have to do to prove it to you? I'll tell you what you have to do. First, you gotta get me a place to stay. And then, you gotta get me a doctor. Right, right. Uh, I'll get right on it. Yeah. You do that. You do that. And you, you go with him. You do what you have to do. You find out who pulled that trigger. Go on. Johnny, everything's going to be all right, OK? Oh, say, this is good-looking beef. You say so. What's the matter, no more mustard? Well, if it's so good, we need mustard for. I said it was good-looking. I didn't say how good-tasting. Pretty good. What does DMV have to say about that black sedan our guy followed? A stolen. Figures. What about Merle Jackson? Oakland says he's out of town. But then his lawyer is in. The guy's name is Andrews. Well, you figure he's the bag man? Maybe. What about the guy that dropped Waco? Well, I keep drawing a blank on that one. I keep figuring... Barney. Barney, come on in. I want you to meet somebody. New partner, meet old partner. Hey, Barney, Steve Keller. Nice to meet you. Same here, Steve. Got to say, I've heard a lot of things about Barney Luchak. I'll bet you have. Yes, he has. <laughs> what a great bowling partner he was. Isn't that right, Steve? Huh? Yes, sir. Great bowler, a lousy cop. Doggone it, you look good. It's been a long time, hasn't it? How long's it been, anyway? Too many Christmas cards, Mike. Hey, you're looking all right yourself. And it really is Lieutenant Stone, huh? Yeah, I told you that. Longest note he ever sent me. Dear Barney, Merry Christmas. P.S. I made Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. What are you doing back in town? Well, I don't know, Mike. Guess it finally got to me. You got a good business going, right? Yeah, sure. But you know the kind of cases a private investigator gets. And it's kept me hopping. Town to town, room to room. Guess I just got homesick. You gonna stay here for good now? I hope so. Oh, that's great, just great. If I ever get through all the printed forms and red tape, I've applied for my state license, but I still need a gun permit. You got any pull, Lieutenant? He doesn't have any pull, I do. I'll get your papers, too. <laughs> hey, I'd appreciate that, Steve. Your report's on files, isn't it, with your prints? Well, I've been gone over five years, but... The way I remember those files, they never throw out anything, right? Right. Come on. Sit down. <laughs> uh, at least some things never change. <laughs> That's right. The food and the furniture. <laughs> Grab a half. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you staying with, Sarah? No, hotel. Hotel? Oh, no. No, no, not anymore, you're not. You're going to stay with me. Hey, Mike, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Now, Jeannie's at school. I'm rattling around in that old house. Come on. Let's check you out of that hotel right now. 
Come on, you're going to stay with me. Sure, I knew Barney Lujek. He was a good cop and a tough one. So was Patrick. Patrick? Yeah, his boy. He was on the force, too, you know. No, I didn't know him. Oh, yeah, he was round about your age when he got himself killed. Well, how's that happen? Well, I don't remember too much about it. There were three men, I think, shot him down. He didn't have a chance. Poor old Barney took it pretty hard. I can imagine. Yeah, but the worst part of it was that all three suspects got off later on the technicality. Say, I hear one of them is back in the street. This Waco guy? Johnny Waco? Yeah, that's him. He's a real bad apple. Uh, oh, it's not in yet. Well, let's give it a couple of minutes. Barney's papers should come through like a breeze. You remember when all this happened? Oh, five, six years. Well, wasn't that about when, uh, when Barney quit the force? Yeah, I heard some place he'd a nervous breakdown. He spent some time in the rest home. Anyway, I'm glad to hear he's back down in good health. Uh, that's probably it now. Oh, seems there's going to be a delay in Barney's papers after all. What? Yeah, it seems somebody named B. Lujak got himself into a beef down in Miami last year. What kind of beef? Reagan and entering, and then skip bail. I'm sorry, Steve, this will have to be checked. Ah, it's probably a mistake. I'm sure there's more than one B. Lujak in the world. Good times together, didn't we? <laughs> hey, Mike. Yeah. What happened to the roses? Helen and I planted them right there. I don't know. They uh, they caught some kind of rot, and I worked on them and worked on them. Couldn't keep them alive. That's a shame. But then things die. Not with you around, they don't. You've got a green thumb. Tell me, you still garden? No, not anymore. <laughs> I'll put you in here. Oh, good. I'm glad you kept the house. So am I. Uh, want some coffee? Sure. When are you going to see Sarah and the kid? Tonight. Tell me, old buddy. What you working on? Same old thing. Something you don't want to talk about? Oh, no, no. It'll come out anyway. Johnny Waco. Oh? Yeah, he shot a small-time hustler this morning. And then, uh, somebody else took a pot shot at him. Point blank with a howitzer, I hope. No, no, he got away. He escaped. Guess we can't have everything, can we? Barney, I want Waco to get his just as much as anybody. You know that. But uh, I don't like what I think is buzzing around in your head. Bitterness, frustration, anger. No, Mike. Not anymore. Oh, I'm not going to say that I won't be a little bit happy when Waco finally buys his. But he was only suspected of killing Patrick. The law saw fit to cut him loose before a trial, and, well, it's still a government of laws, not men. I'm at peace, Mike. I'm at peace. I can't tell you how good it makes me feel to hear you say that. Why is that? Because you thought maybe my showing up at the same time wasn't just a coincidence? Yeah, that's what I thought. And it's the kind of thought I, I don't like to have. Just one you couldn't help. Like you never could help burning the coffee. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> That's gonna hurt when the anesthetic wears off. I'll give you a prescription. You finished? Yes. And take 500 from that envelope over there and get out of here. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. I got something for you. A friend of mine, a bartender, said somebody came in looking for you. What did you get a name? He used to be a cop. Name of Lou Jack. Lou Jack. Yeah. You know him? Oh, Lou Jack, that crazy old man. All these years, and he's still tracking me. All right. You find out where he's living. He used to live around here. He's got to have family, friends, and somebody that he can crawl in with. Oh, and you get me a rifle? Hey, Johnny, you know I do just about anything for you, but uh -huh. that guy's got family, okay? I don't want anything to do with killing no cop. Maybe this will take the sting out of it. I get half? That's right. You buy whatever information you need. The rest is yours. You want him bad. He's already killed two of my buddies, and I'm not going to be number three. <laughs> hey, oh. what did I tell you? Huh? Good. <laughs> you need a uh, you need a six just to stay in this game. Well, just watch me. All right. So how long will I have to wait? Uh, what the permit? Well, you'll probably be ready in the morning. Just running a print check. Pulled my prints out of my old file, did you? Yeah. Good. And you'll get the match tomorrow? Hope so. That's good. Real good. Uh, sorry to put you to all the trouble. Oh, no trouble. Hey, come on up there. Roll it before it hatches. When you bowl that badly, I always know the reason. Yeah, what's that? Your head's still in the office. Oh, is that so? Well, let's bowl another line just to prove that you're wrong. No, 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 not me. Not me, <laughs> me either. Both of you, huh? Both ganging up on me right up to the last shot. <laughs> ah. I promised my daughter-in-law a visit tonight, remember? Yeah, I forgot. That's right. Hey, Mike. Want to join me? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. I haven't seen Sarah and your grandson in years. We'll take a cab. No, 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 I'll, I'll drive the car. I just want to see how you handle this in the clutch. That's me, Mr. Clutch. Barney, watchman weep. You're invited. Uh, no thanks. I think I'm gonna listen to the 49ers game. Say it yourself. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. We won't be long. Okay. Which one is Lou Jack? The short, stocky one with the suit on. Oh. Who's his friend? There's a cop named Stone. Used to be his partner. Hey, come on, Bellows. I've given you everything I can. Let's get out of here. Yeah, j just relax, will you? I want to see if he's coming out or if he's staying here. Look at him, will you? Just look at the size of him. Shh. If he woke up and found you here... I know. I know he'd be up half the night and me with him. <laughs>
fine-looking boy, Sarah. Thank you. But I hate to think of the trouble he'll be if his grandfather doesn't stop spoiling him. Do you really think you can stop him? No, but there are limits. And what are the limits to my loving my grandchild, <laughs> might I ask? Barney, all those presents from wherever you're traveling. I'll try to control myself. Anything else? <laughs> yeah. You've made me beneficiary on your life insurance. Now, I don't think that's right. Um, you still have your sister back east. It's for the boy, Sarah. Don't you see, if anything happened to me, I want him protected. Coming to see what happened to you. Tagged him. Where? His daughter-in-law's. I don't think he's staying there. Uh, I'm almost sure he's bunking with a cop by the name of Stone. Stone? Sure. His ex-partner, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I, uh, I got his address. Well, let's go. Now? Now. Johnny, you're in no shape to go after anybody now. You just get me there, okay? Okay, okay. Thanks, Steve. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Right. I'll just be a second, Barney. Oh, here. Here's the keys. Huh. Good. You all right? Why? I don't know. It just looks as though something's eating at you. What is it? Nothing that can't wait. You're sure? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Is that better? It is yeah, good. Down and maybe six about half the length of the I bet you five that they blow it. No way. Okay, what do you do now? You got six inches to go. The whole state. I bet you another five that they give it to Jensen, and he loses three yards. Oh, sure. did you know that? Heard it on the radio yesterday. <laughs> Always one up, huh? Listen, grab yourself a sandwich. Don't wait for me to ask you. Since you know how this thing turned out, no use watching it any longer. Barney, why did you come back? I told you. No, I mean at this particular time. I don't know. It's been building up in me for a long time. People I missed, like you, Sarah. 
My grandson? You know, uh, that partner of yours kind of reminds me of Patrick. If he'd lived, that's how I think he'd have turned out. Oops. you before we didn't see anything. All we heard was a car speeding around. Now, what, will you please get out there and double check those footprints? Mike, he's okay. Nobody's hurt. Come on. There's one right there. Will you check that one? Why did you hear about this so fast? It was downtown. What were you doing downtown? Checking out something. Like what? It's not important. Come here. You know football scores to you, but you checked them out tonight, didn't you? What are you doing? Babysitting an old man? Right, come on, come on. Cough it up. What is it? Barney. Barney? Yeah. That Miami thing? Yeah, now, uh, it's probably not for but you. You think those bullets were meant for him and not for me, well, it right? it could be Barney's got the same enemies you do. Oh, you know? sure. Sure, but who knows he's in town? Well, somebody does. Why do you think I was parked outside the daughter-in-law's tonight? Because I saw two guys down the street. I think I'd recognize one of them. Well, don't you think my friend would tell me if he thought somebody was trying Not to kill him? Not if he had good reason. No, I don't. OK, OK. So he's got plenty of motive wanting Waco dead. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Well, there are hundreds of others who have that same motive. Now, what is it? Every description that we have gotten of Waco's assailant, no matter how vague it's been, it generally fits, Barney. I know. Well, it's not enough. Not for what you're saying. OK, you asked me. I told you. I'm glad you're OK, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, now, you didn't have to tear out the whole frame like that, did you? What's the matter with you? Nothing outside, Mike. You want a couple men left out front? No, there's no need for that. Whatever you say. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, thanks a lot, fellas. Look, I'm, I'm sorry this had to happen while you're here. Hey, better me than Jeannie. Yeah, I guess so. Does this make any sense to you? Why don't we uh, talk it out? We used to strip things down pretty good together. OK, talk. Who am I a threat to? Maybe you're not a threat. Maybe somebody just hates your beautiful face. Who? People you put in prison. Anybody in particular been released recently? All the people I know who are out want to stay out. They wouldn't take a chance like this. OK, then. Let's go back to the threat idea. Let's say it's something you're working on now, and there's more involved than you know. You mean like that Waco thing? Could be. Let's examine it. Who's Waco tied in with? Well, there's this fella called Jackson over in Oakland. And we think maybe, just maybe he gave Waco a contract on this guy he shot this morning. And then maybe put one out on Waco himself? Yeah. Nobody else involved? Maybe. Who? An attorney named Andrews. Where's he fit? Jackson's his client. He may be the payoff man. You think Andrews is worried you'll prove that? No. Doesn't add up. What does? Well, Steve has a very interesting theory. Yeah? What's that? He thinks that those bullets weren't meant for me. You mean I was the target? What do you think? I guess anything's possible. But I sort of figured all my old enemies are most likely dead and buried by now. Nobody comes to mind? Mike, I told you, I'm at peace. That's good. Just bought 
some sinkers downstairs. You want one? Uh, no, thanks. I know you like chocolate. I bought two chocolates. Maybe later. Fix me a cup of coffee, will you, please? Listen, I'm uh, sorry I got sore last night. Oh, that's okay. No, it isn't. Close the door. Sit down, huh? to Barney. He says those shots couldn't have been meant for him. You told him what I said? Sure. Why? You wanted my reaction, I wanted his. And what was it? Well, if he's in a shooting war with Waco, he's a much better poker player than he used to be. You asked him that too? No, I couldn't ask him that. After all, I worked with the guy for nine years. Do you have uh, any new thoughts? Yes. Maybe you're a much better cop than I am. Oh, my God. No, I mean it. Now, listen, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. People have blind spots, especially when it comes to friends. So where do you stand? Trouble. OK. Listen, did you find out who was tailing us yet? Yeah, he's a wheel man for Jackson named Bellows. Did you check out the print match? It's not in yet. OK, uh, will you uh, check out this guy, Bellows? Yeah, yeah. Mike, uh... I'm sorry. I hope so. These things have gone up to 15 cents a piece. And you stuck me with two of them. And I don't like chocolate. Mr. Andrews? Yes? My name's Lou Jack, sir, and I'm here on a case. Private investigator? Yes, sir. And formerly with the San Francisco Police Department. If I could just have a moment with you. Um, yeah, okay. Um, what can I do for you? Well, sir, what brought me all the way out from Chicago is I'm trying to locate a gentleman I understand is a business associate of yours. Oh, what's his name? Johnny Waco. Well, I'm afraid that your source of information isn't that reliable. I don't know anybody by that name. Oh, really? I thought Merle Jackson had you pay him off for killing some cheap punk named Olson. What are you talking about? Who sent you? I sent myself. I'm the man who shot Waco. I figure it's safe to tell you that, right? That's 25 floors to the ground, Mr. Andrews. And if you don't tell me where Waco is, I'm gonna splatter you all over the pavement. You understand me? You're crazy. Maybe. Maybe I got a right to be. Did you ever have a son, Mr. Andrews? No. Oh. I did. Good son. Everything any father ever wanted. And you know what he wanted? No. Oh. He wanted to be like me. And he made me proud. He made us all proud. And then... And that punk, your friend, that no good scum, cut him down in the street, murdered him. Well, it's his turn now, Mr. Andrews. He's going to die. You got that? He's going to die.
parked out. What are you hassling me for? I didn't do nothing. Yeah, so what are you doing parked out on the Fillmore last night, huh? Are you kidding? Last night I was at a movie. Come on, let's go. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? I'm gonna have a talk with you, and I'm gonna go over and have a talk with Merle Jackson. Merle Jackson? What for? To tell him that you've been feeding us information about his action in Oakland. Oh, come on. Jackson's not gonna buy that. You wanna make a bet? Let's try it. Hey, hey, not man that. Listen, you're, uh, you're driving me, right, man? Because I fed you nothing about Jackson. Well, somebody has. And when he finds out it's you, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Now, wait a minute. That is illegal. You can't do that. Try me. Now, wait a minute. You don't want me. You don't want Jackson. What do you want? Johnny Waco. Johnny, he was gonna kill me. I had to tell him. Sure, sure, I understand. You gotta get out of town, Johnny. Yeah, okay. Come in. Waco's over at the Cable Motel on Lombard under the name of Saunders. You all right? I feel sick. I've been spying on one of my oldest friends. And I find this. Chicago gunman slain. Who's this guy, Ballard? One of the three suspects in the killing of Barney's son. The other one? Duke Charles, yeah. Charles was murdered last August in Miami. Now, two weeks before that, a B. Lou Jack was busted for breaking and entering to Charles's home. A report just came in, and the prints from B. Lou Jack and Barney Lou Jack match. Mike, it's... Uh... Barney's already murdered two men, and he's looking for the third. So what do you want to do? Find Waco before he does. Mr. Saunders, the key to your room, 320. You know, I, uh, I could move that friend of yours closer to your room. No, across the court is just fine. He's not that good a friend, just business. Oh, listen, uh, don't mention the room to him. It'll look thoughtful if I surprise him. Huh? Uh, sure enough. Just send him up to my place, room 223. Right, Mr. Saunders. Thank you. Think he can get to Waco that quick? With all the names I gave him, he's a good cop. He was a good cop. Now he's nothing but a common killer. Judge him hard. That's right, I judge him hard.
Can I help you? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm here to see Mr. Saunders. Oh, he's up in room 223 over there. You, you go over those stairs right there. Thank you. Radio for backup units. Take care of the rear. Nobody in or out. Barney. Stay right where you are. Don't move. I mean it. To finish it, Mike. It's already finished. Give me the gun. Not until Waco's dead. Don't blame yourself for what happened to your son. Nobody asked him to be a cop. He chose that for himself. Because of me. You didn't kill him. Waco did. He has to pay, Mike. He will. I've got him on a murder charge. We had him before. Barney, you give me that gun. Friend to friend now. You know I'm going to have to book you, don't you? Sure. You got a job to do. Sorry, Mike. You just don't understand what I have to do. was going to shoot me. Get him out of here. I'm telling you, he was crazy. Get him away from me. some company Saturday night go out get something to eat do something thanks but I I think I'd like to be alone tonight I've got a lot of things I have to sort out oh Steve if you have any time tomorrow morning I could use a hand around here sure what do you need roses roses yeah Right there. You wouldn't believe how beautiful this old place looked. 
when they were growing right there. I'll see you tomorrow. 